Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Disciplinary Core Idea ESS-1A. It's on the universe and its stars. NASA pointed its Hubble Space Telescope at the darkest part of the sky, and they took a long image. And what they found is something like this. And what you're looking at right here, again, the darkest part of the sky, are thousands of galaxies that are literally billions of light years away. And so the universe is immense. Wherever we look, we find galaxies, and those are filled with billions of stars. And so again, the universe is everything that we can see. It's filled up with galaxies. We live in one called the Milky Way galaxy. I can't show you a picture of it because you're inside of it. But sometimes on a dark night, you can see this really, really light, place in the sky and that's going to be kind of looking into the Milky Way galaxy. Within that we have billions of stars and each of those have their own little solar system uh, in, in, um, as they revolve around that star. And then we're just one planet around the sun. And so that's kind of where you are in the universe. But what is the universe? The universe is really, really old. It's about 13.7 billion light years. Um, it was formed in our, our current theory is it was formed through a big bang. There was this massive explosion where even the matter of the universe was formed in the first few minutes. And it's been racing away uh, ever since. What kind of evidence do we have for that? Well, no matter where we look in the universe, we find that everything is moving away from us. And so if we play the clock backwards, then everything was closer and closer and eventually at one point was at what scientists call a singularity. What is some other evidence? Well, we get this background radiation. We're getting microwaves and that's from the Big Bang. And when you're watching a television channel and you see that static, a portion of that is actually background radiation from the Big Bang. Well, what is the universe made up of? It's primarily made up of hydrogen and helium. So when you're looking at those stars, you're mostly looking at hydrogen and helium. Where did the rest of us come from? Well, everything that is uh, iron and lighter on the periodic table came from the nuclear fusion inside stars. And what about the rest of the periodic table that came from supernova or explosions of stars? And so you literally are made of stardust. Um, which is pretty cool. How do we know so much about the universe? Well, we use telescopes to figure out you know, how the universe works. And those, those telescopes are looking at visible light, like an optical telescope. And then we're also looking at invisible light. We're looking at uh, radio waves and x-rays and microwaves coming to us from space. And we start to figure out some patterns. And so if we look at each of those stars and we look at the spectra, in other words, the light coming from it, the luminosity, how bright it is, we start to figure out these patterns and we start to figure out evolution of stars. Because stars go through evolution. They go through a specific uh, lifespan. And so our sun is a typical star and it was born and will live about 10 billion years. Don't be scared. We're about half of the way there. And so we're about half of the way through this 10 billion year lifespan and our sun will eventually get massive. It'll envelop the earth and it'll form uh, eventually as it loses its energy or its fuel, it'll form something called a white dwarf and it will give off no luminosity anymore. And so uh, how do we teach all of this in school? Well, in the lower elementary grades, we want to start talking about the things that students can see in the sky. That is the sun, the moon, and the stars. And we, st we want to start figuring out patterns about their motions during the day, during the month, and during the year. And so it's really easy to do this. You can observe the sun during different times of the day and the moon during different times of the day. We can describe that. And over time, we can eventually make predictions. When can we see the sun? Can we see it at night? No. Uh, when can we see the moon? Can we see it at night? Yeah. Can we see it during the day? Yeah. And what does it look like? And what about the stars? And what stars can we see during different seasons? And so you want students making observations on their own. Um, we can always use telescopes to give us better data about that. And the internet allows you to see images and even control some telescopes. As we move into the upper elementary grades, we want to push this point home that the sun is simply a star. It's a star that's very close to us. And so it's really, really big and has a huge amount of energy, but it's one of billions and billions of stars um, in our own galaxy that we can see. And again, we can even see galaxies outside of that. Some of them are really, really big. Some are relatively small compared to the sun, but their distances are gonna vary how far they are away from us. Even though they look flat, it's three-dimensional. 
As we move into middle school, we want to start reevaluating this observation, describing, and making patterns. In other words, we want to start to understand why the sun moves in the way it does, and why does the moon move in the way it does. What do we want to add to that? We want to add models. Our current model, our heliocentric model, this idea that the sun is at the center and the earth uh, orbits around that and the moon orbits around us. And so we can use those models to better understand what we're actually observing. As we move into high school, we want to start talking about stellar evolution, this idea that stars will go through a specific lifespan and that our sun is going to last about 10 billion years overall and we're about halfway there. Um, we want to talk about our place in the galaxy. So we're inside the Milky Way galaxy. This is just an artist's depiction of this. Um, but it's massive. It has somewhere between 104 billion stars inside of that. And we get variation in that because um, it depends on what you count as a star and what we can see as a star. But then our galaxies are inside what's called the observable universe. And so we're going to have billions of galaxies found within that universe. And then you want to start to emphasize this idea that we can look at stars and patterns start to emerge and that we can see more in space than you can see with the naked eye through the use of telescopes. So that's the universe. It's really massive. It has billions of galaxies inside that, billions of stars, and you're just on one planet uh, in orbit around one of those, the sun. And I hope that was helpful.